Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, a Wednesday and it's the 30th of March or March 30th, as you say in America, uh, 2022. And our theme today is all about intercession and very, very good, very good reading today. It's one of those readings that you really have to uh, chew on. It's it's not something that you can just read the once. You really have to chew on it and meditate on it. And um, it, it will yield good fruit. It will yield good fruit. It also, uh, you know, we talk about the text. When we say the text, we're talking about one verse, maybe out of the context. Um, and that one verse, and uh, you know, with these readings, they seem to be one-liners. And the one-liner is, he wondered that there was no intercessor. Isaiah 59, verse 16. But to get the context, you really have to read it from Isaiah 58 uh, through chapters Isaiah 58 through chapter 59. And I think I said I counted, although I'm using the Passion Translation, and one of the things that really bugs me with the Passion Translation it's the verses are so small, so it's so easily to miss it. But I think there's 35 verses between the two chapters. Um, but, you, you know, intercession, a very important part of the church's life. And uh, every revival, every move of God can be traced back to somebody praying. And, it, and then I think that's why it's so important that we understand how to operate in intercession, how to pray. Um, you know, we can just get into clicks and just be praying for one another from an emotional point of view. Where really, you know, when the disciples asked Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, in Luke 18, um, or sorry, Luke chapter 11, and I think Luke 18 as well, when they asked him, uh, Lord, teach us to pray, it's not that he gave us a formula uh, or, you know, a set of words that we should pray like we usually do, you know, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we recite that prayer, don't we? But it's more a template. And uh, if you notice in that template, it's our Father which art in heaven. It's acknowledging your sonship, whether you're female or male, uh, we are all sons. There is no male or female in the spirit. It's acknowledging our Father, first of all. Uh, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then it's hallowing his name. And I think if there's one thing that we are really lacking or short of, especially in the charismatic church, is that there's a lack of, number one, awe. And there's a lack of, in some senses, respect <laughs> I know, I know Toronto, Toronto blew all that out of the water, but there has to be a respect, there has to be an awe of God and realise, and in other words, as the reading tells us today, there has to be a worship of him. The, the two have to go together, otherwise it just becomes almost a, a cliquish group of people meeting together, praying for each one's desires, and really... Our prayer should not be aimed at praying for our desires. It really should be aimed at seeking the kingdom of God. And when I say the kingdom of God, we use that word kingdom very lightly. We're talking about God's government, God's way of doing things. And that there is an order with God. There is an order with government. When you don't get a government operating, if we look at it from, a, from an earthly point of view, when you get a government operating, that's, uh, or you get a country that has no government, or when the government's taken out, you have chaos. You have chaos. And so I think that's one of the first things, uh, or one of the first things we have to learn is, number one, we, we have to realize that we are children of God, that we are co-partners with him. Uh, we're not just his servants. He lives within us, and we pray with his faith, and we have vision and direction in our prayers. In other words, not just firing prayers into the air and hoping that they, they, they hit the target. It's being 
what we would say in warfare terms, a missile that is, um, you know, direct, it's guided, and our prayers should be the same. And, and the reading today really helps us with that, Isaiah 58 and 59. And we were saying this morning, you know, the importance, the opening uh, verses in Isaiah 58 is, uh, don't be silent, uh, tell my people, their transgressions. In other words, this is the reason you're, you're missing the mark is because you need to realign. Prophetic ministry should always realign people to the will of God, to God's will for a situation. Uh, very, very important. Otherwise, we just get into rubbing one another's backs. And um, and that's the same with a prayer, you know, with a, uh, you know, online prayer groups, uh, stuff like that. It can become cliquish if you're not praying the will of God. I also mentioned this morning, and it was not in any way a condemnation, but I, I was just trying to emphasize that we should have a global, a global view for God so loved the world that he gave. God so loved the world that he gave. He didn't just love the UK. He didn't just love the USA. He loved the world. And uh, I made a quote this morning that out of the population of the world, and I, and I think the UK is even less, but the U, if I take the USA, because um, this is a good morning America, if I take the USA, the USA population is 17%. Let me say that again, one seven, 17% 17 of the world population. And so if all our prayers are just for the USA or just for the UK, we are really missing the mark when God so loved the world, God so loved the nations of the world. And so it's important that we realign there and we don't just get territorial. I know that God has placed us in certain places in the soil of certain nations and that we are to pray for our nation. I am not saying that we don't pray for the nation, but what I'm saying is we need to get a global view. And one of the things that the internet has helped us with and the technology in this last 10, 20 years is that we are able to come together and especially on these vine press uh, gatherings, we've had people from Australia, New Zealand, uh, Pakistan, India, Canada, America, <coughs> UK, South Africa, uh, from all over the globe, all over the globe. It's very, very important, church. And it's very difficult when you're living in one country because that's all you tend to see is just your own country. But God's heart and God's desire is that we as a people of God, who, by the way, do not belong to this world, we do not belong to this world. We are pilgrims passing through. <laughs> We're pilgrims passing through. We belong to another kingdom. We belong to a heavenly kingdom. And God's heart for his people is that we, according to Matthew chapter 6, seek first. First, number one. Number one priority is to seek first the kingdom of God the government of God for our world. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, so that that is the first point on, on intercession. Uh, the second point is this, that uh, like this morning we had on a guy uh, <laughs> from Pakistan, and, and it's what you call in internet terms trolling. When you troll, troll a platform, you're trolling a platform for your own desires, your own needs. This platform that we're doing uh, and operating on, on, on a devotional level, is number one, to come together. Number two, to seek God's kingdom. Number three, to develop our personal relationship with him. Now I I have to be I have to to bring this in because I'm responsible in some ways 
you know, you are responsible for the vision that God gave you. You, Each one of us are responsible for the assignments that he gives us. And I'm responsible for the assignment for Vine Press. It doesn't mean that I uh, uh, manipulate it, control it, but I have a responsibility before God to govern it. And uh, as we said this morning, in Isaiah, the very first thing Isaiah had to do was to correct, to correct. Now, there is a tendency when we preach the love of God that we preach this lovey-dovey God that, you know, turns a blind eye to to uh, if we go astray. No, our God is a loving God, and true love, true love will correct, will realign you. Amen? So, and that's the first thing that you see in that opening in Isaiah 58 is, and, and God tells, the Lord tells Isaiah, look, don't hold back, number one. Number two, speak it out clear, sound the trumpet, speak it out clear to my people. That is their transgressions. Now, that seems a very harsh word, but really, the secret is, and I've said this before, many a time we blame the devil for a lot of stuff that's happening in our lives when really we should look at ourselves and see decisions that we made that we're not according to the kingdom of God, we're not according to his government, we're not according to his will, we did or we sowed. We sowed something in our past and we're reaping that. We're reaping what we're going through. And uh, if you would listen to a lot of Christians, you would think that they were worshipping the devil. The devil did this, the devil did that. No, the devil is under our feet. Jesus said in Matthew, at the end of Matthew's gospel, just before he was resurrected, he said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. I give you power over all the power of the enemy. And in another part in scripture, it says, greater is he that is within you than that is in the world. So, we have to realign, church. We have to get away from this self-seeking. And I'm not saying that we don't pray for one another. But what I'm saying is, and a lot of times we move out of an emotional way of praying for a brother or a sister. Um, and that's good. That's good to do that. But we really need to seek him. We really need to seek him and pray beyond our knees. I also said this morning that my mother, I always remember my mother used to say, uh, you know, when we were going through difficulties, you know, 12 children, uh, she always used to say, there's always someone worse off than you. In other words, don't get belly gazing at your own problems and want everybody to rub you on the back and pat you on the back. It's time, church, to grow up. It's time to grow up. It's time to get a backbone and to be consistent with him. Amen. To seek him first in Jesus' name. So that's what trolling is. Trolling is, is when you come on a platform, like the guy did this morning, asking for a wife <laughs> from Pakistan, asking for a wife, giving his phone number, He's using the platform to troll for his own desires. This platform, number one, is to seek God together. Number two is to uplift the name of Jesus. Number three is to encourage one another and strengthen one another. Number four is to get us disciplined. Let me say it again. To get us disciplined, because that's another word that people don't like, the word or oh, discipline. But no, you have to have discipline. You are a soldier of Jesus Christ. You are a soldier of the kingdom of God. And every soldier has to be disciplined, disciplined. He has to be disciplined in the order that he does. I remember Benny Hinn on a, oh, I'm going back a number of years, and he was teaching on a particular subject. And uh, he told the people this. He said, look, I'm doing a series here. And if you know, don't don't go missing four or five of the of those lessons and then come to the end of the lesson and want the want the results. 
you've got to be a disciplined disciple of Jesus, learn his word, and one of the things I, that I pray comes out of these devotionals is that you get disciplined in a quiet time. You get disciplined in setting time aside. You get disciplined and making it your priority, making it your priority to seek him a regular time, a daily time, seeking God. Now, <laughs> I got into preaching mode, and I didn't mean to get into preaching mode, but I just feel I just feel that burden that it's time for us to mature. It's time for us to grow up. And uh, don't just use the platform when, you, when you've got a need. Do you understand what I mean? And I say that in as much love and uh, respect as I can. Don't just use the platform, any platform, just to get your own needs across. Start to seek other people's needs. Start to seek to pray for other people. Start to seek to pray, not just for your own nation, but to get a world view, to get a global view, to get a cosmos view of the universe, and to realize that we have been called to great things. We have been called in the name of Yeshua, bearing his name, having his spirit dwelling within us, having a written word called the Bible, which, by the way, men were burnt at the stake. Men and women were burnt at the stake that you and I could read this these translations in the, in the language that we understand. Do you realize the privilege and the honor? Uh, and not just to treat it to just get me a pick-me-up, or, you know, I want to feel better. I want to feel good feeling. No, 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 no. We want to find out what our calling is. We want to get into the intercession. And we want to pray. We want to pray, thy kingdom come on earth. On earth. Let me say it again. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 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 Wow. Wow. <laughs> whoa, what can I do? Whoa, whoa, horsey, whoa. <laughs> uh, uh, what are you saying? Uh, uh, what are you saying, Esther? We're hitting the point again. Yeah, I, I am, Esther, because, you know, we get people come on the site and we don't see them for months. They only come on when they've got a need. And you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do it if you're going to stand when the testing comes. You have to be consistent. You have to be consistent and not just rely on the group to pray for you. You've got to have that personal walk with him. Jesus told, told a parable about uh, two men. One built his house on the sand and the other one built his house on the rock. And it said the winds came and the storms came. And listen, the storms hit both the sand and the rock. And uh, I forget who it was, but I remember a preacher saying, you know, if we have this daily exercise with him, when the storms come, we're ready. We're not, we're not panicking when the storm comes to get everything, uh, you know, nailed down. And we're already ready. We're already in the faith. Our swords are sharp. Our instruments, our weapons are clean and ready to go. Now, that's a very, very difficult subject that I'm talking about because either way, some will say, oh, you're being controlling. I don't want to be under control. Well, then that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine, but I'm not here to tickle you. I'm not here to tickle you, and I'm not here, you know, just to pat you on the back and say, ah, oh, God loves you, and ding-dongs, and boings, and haze, and hoes. I'm here to say, look, wake up, get ready, get ready. We are nearer than we think. And as we said the other day, he's coming at a time. Let me say it again. He's coming at a time that you think not. In other words, unexpected. Unexpected. Be ready for when the master comes. Be ready, church. Be ready. Get ready. Don't get so involved in this world's affairs that you get so bogged down that you're not ready. Don't be like the five virgins. Remember the story of the ten virgins? Vir virgins, <laughs> virgins, virgins. 
The story of the ten virgins, five had their oil filled, their lamps filled, five neglected, and then when the master came, they were running around trying to get the oil. Listen, you should be ready. You should be ready, ready, get ready. <laughs> get prepared for a move of God. Before the children of Israel crossed the Jordan, it says they spent three days in preparation. Three days in preparation. Uh, you, you have to be ready, church. You have to be ready. And that's the whole purpose of these broadcasts. I'm not here to, to, to form a social club. You understand? Community, yes. But not a social club where you just come on for your needs and, and the body will pray for you and, oh, we'll feel sympathy for you. No, sometimes you need to kick up the backside. <laughs> you need to kick up the backside and say, look, look, get things in order. Get things in order. Start to seek him, first of all. When you start to seek him, most of your problems will be sorted. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, there we go. There we go. And perhaps we'll lose a few more. <laughs> well, what can you do? What can you do? I have to be faithful. I have to be faithful to speak what God tells me to speak. I cannot just, well, I can't say this because, oh, people might think that. Oh, well, I can't say that because people will interpret it that way. No, you have ears to hear. And if you are in the right place with God, you'll hear his spirit say, this is the way, walk ye in it. And let me say it again, because we, we've hit the religious stuff and the controlling stuff does not mean we do not believe in government. We believe in government. We believe in the apostolic. We believe in the fivefold ministry. The fivefold ministry is given not to just so that you can put your feet up and say, oh, the fivefold ministry will do it for me. The fivefold ministry is there to mature the believers to do the work of the ministry. Ephesians chapter 4, I think it is, or chapter 5. That's the whole purpose. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, definitely, pray for one another. Pray for one another. But, you know, again, coming back to what Benny Hinn said, if you're not consistent, if, if you're just coming on just to get, well, I feel down today, so I think I'll go on to the devotional, you're not going to get anything. You're not going to get, it's not going to last. You may get a little perk and a little, you know, like a jump start, you know, when the car's battery is, is low. But if you keep getting, if you keep getting your battery in your car boosted all the time, it's going to damage the battery. You have to discipline yourself to say, come hell or high water, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I am not following Jesus just to get my needs met. I am not following Jesus just to get a feel-good factor. I am not following Jesus to just get the emotional kick. I'm following Jesus whether I feel emotional, whether I feel on a high, whether I feel on a low. I am following him. I have decided. I have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. There's a prime minister once said, uh, I think it was Maggie Thatcher, and I know some people didn't like it, but she said, this lady is not for turning. Not for turning. We are not for turning, church. We are not for turning. But because we've come out of a legalistic system does not mean we go in the other, the, the pendulum swings the other way and we get a free for all. No. No, two sides to the story, church. Two sides to the story. Come under the discipline of God. Let him speak to you. Let him correct you. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Save some by the fire, some by the flood, but all through the blood. As Paul said, snatch them from the fire. And then watch yourself. Be careful of yourself because we are all, uh, how did it? We are all imperfect vessels till we get our new body. It's true. That's true. Whether, whether you want to be dogmatic over your doctrine or not, 
We're all, we are all, uh, how did he put it? How did that Dean put it uh, when he was uh, taking Prince Philip's uh, uh, memorial yesterday? Um, we're all imperfect. We're all flawed, that's the word. We are all flawed with sin, but we have been redeemed. Amen. But we're still operating in a body that is going to be redeemed and we're going to take on a new body. Is it mortality? Take on immortality. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the certain hope and resurrection of our bodies. Amen, amen, amen. So there we go. There we go. So there we have it. Um, God loves you. <laughs> he loves you so much, he'll discipline you. He loves you so much that he'll say no to some of your desires. He loves you so much that he'll continue to correct you, correct you, correct you. He'll continue to send people into your life to realign you. Amen, amen, amen. So our whole subject today is about intercession. And uh, uh, there's some of the points. But if I can just give you the overview of, of this two chapters, Isaiah 58 and 59, Number one, the very first thing that God deals with is in Isaiah 58 verses 1 to 14 and 59 verses 3 to 8, and it's Israel's sin. Now that's another word that we don't like, isn't it? It's an old-fashioned word, sin, S-I-N, sin. And let me put it another way, dealing with Israel's falling short of the mark that God has got for them. Amen. Secondly, Israel's sufferings, 59, Isaiah 59, verses 1 to 2, and verses 9 to 11. Thirdly, Israel's supplications, Isaiah 59, verses 12 to 15. And then fourthly, Israel's Savior. We have a Savior, church. We have a Savior. Some through the fire some through the flood, but all through the blood. Amen, amen, amen. You've got to have that too, that letter bait. You've got to have, it's almost like you're putting your dreams in flesh. You're fleshing out your dreams. There has to be a practicality in our walk with God. And if you read the epistles of Paul, and especially in 1 and 2 Corinthians you will find that Paul does not hold back from disciplining the church and, put, and from putting in certain points and steps, amen, where they have to walk it out. Much, much, as James said, show me your faith and I'll show you my works. I will show you my faith by my works. It has to have corresponding action Otherwise, all you've got is intellectualism, emotionalism, and you're up and down like a yo-yo. Wow. <laughs> wow. Did he, did he say that? Did he say, yes, yes, I said that. Let me say it again. Did he say that? Yes, yes, I said that. I said all you've got is intellectualism and emotionalism, but you're not rooted and grounded on the word if you're just looking for that, if you're just looking for your own needs, belly button, self-interest. Wow. <laughs> it's just funny, these devotionals. You know what? These devotionals are so funny because you never know what the Lord's going to do or what he's going to say. And uh, I just go with the flow. I just have to go with the flow. What can I do? I like. To, I would like to get into a nice order where we start them, start the broadcast where I greet you all. Good morning. Good afternoon. How are you? Oh, are you not feeling well? Oh. <laughs> uh, now, again, let me say it. It doesn't mean that we don't pray for one another. I am not devaluing that. But I'm saying there's a greater thing. Come up higher. Come up higher. Come into the heavenly realms. Amen, amen. Amen. Ding dong. Boing. Hey in a hole. <laughs> you see, people look on the drunkenness. 
uh, they look on the drunkenness and they think, oh, great, we're having a party. Listen, no, no. <laughs> this drinking is to get us to higher levels. This drinking is to get us to walk out you know, on the levels. Amen, amen, amen. There has to be a practical level, church. There has to be a working out of it. There has to be a fleshing. Jesus, the Spirit, third mem second member of the Trinity, came and he took on flesh and blood and he lived it out. And we, as a church have to live it out. Amen? Amen, amen. That's the difference between socialism and community. We live it out. We've got to be a people that they say how they love one another and not just be scroungers, not just be scroungers to just take, take, give me, give me, give me, feed me, feed me, feed me. Have you ever watched a bird's nest when the chicks are in the nest and all they don't hear on that little beaks are opening? Feed me, feed me, feed me. <laughs> feed yourself. <laughs> oh, no, no. Okay. Okay. All right. There we go. That's, that's, what can I do? What can I do? As Katia says, what can you do? What can you do, church? What can you do? I just have to say it as it is. I have to say it as it is. I'm tired of this fantasy realm that people are moving in. Fantasy, but not walked out. Yes, there is a supernatural realm. Yes, there is. Yes, there are miracles. Yes, there are angels and angelic visitations. But at the end of the day, I have to walk out what my assignment is. And each one of us have a different assignment. I can't be like Peter that looks around at John and says to the Lord, what about this man, Lord? And the Lord says to him in paraphrase language, mind your own business and get on with what I've got for you. And I'm telling you, I'm going to take you to places you don't want to go. People are going to bind your hands, take you to places you don't want to go. Ooh, ooh, I don't feel like that. <laughs> there you go. Oh, <laughs> so we need the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we do, Brenda. We need the Holy Spirit. We do. We need him. We need him. Help us, God. Help us. Help us get our act together. Help us to get real. Get real. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Okay, um, where are we? I'm out of time. And I, I want to go to the reading because it's such a good reading today. So practical. I think some people don't always like these uh, devotionals about my utmost for his highest because it takes them out of their comfort zone. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, let's go there then. And um, holiness or hardness towards God is the title and the scripture verse is Isaiah 59, verse 16. He wondered that there was no intercessor. The reason many of us stop praying, now this is a very good key right at the beginning. This is a key thing now, if you can grasp this. The reason many of us stop praying and become hard towards God is that we only have an emotional interest in prayer. Let me hit that point again. The reason many of us stop praying and become hard towards God is that we only have an emotional interest in prayer. It sounds good to say that we pray, and we read books on prayer which tell us that prayer is ding dong boing, hey and ho, prayer is beneficial. That our minds are quieted and our souls are uplifted when we pray. But Isaiah implied in this verse that God is amazed at such thoughts about prayer. You see, because in the beginning of Isaiah 58, he said, you love to approach me, you love to pray to me. You know, you get emotional over it. Oh, you love it. You love the feeling. You love the, the ding, the dongs up and down your spine. Worship and intercession must go together. One is impossible without the other. Intercession means raising ourselves up to the point of getting the mind of Christ regarding the person or the nation for whom we are praying. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Instead of worshipping God, we recite speeches to God about how prayer is supposed to work. 
Are we worshipping God or disputing him when we say, but God, I just don't see how you're going to do this. This is a sure sign that we are not worshipping. When we lose sight of God, we become hard. Listen, listen. We become hard and dogmatic. We throw our petitions at his throne and dictate to him what we want him to do. We don't worship God, nor do we seek to conform our minds to the mind of Christ. And if we are hard towards God, we will become hard towards other people. I'm just going to pause on that to let you let that sink in. Are we worshipping God in a way that will raise us up to where we can take hold of him? Having such intimate contact with him that we know his mind about the ones for whom we pray. Are we living in holy relationship with God? Or have we become hard and dogmatic? Now that's a question mark. That's a question mark for each one of us. Do you find yourself thinking that there is no one interceding properly? Then be that person yourself. Be a person who worships God and lives in a holy relationship with him. Get involved in the real work of intercession, remembering that it truly is work. Did you hear that, church? It's work. Work that demands all your energy, but work which has no hidden pitfalls. Preaching the gospel has its share of pitfalls, but intercessory prayer has none whatsoever. Amen, amen. Amen. Very hard today, isn't it? Very sharp, right to the point. The bullseye, ding, boing, hey and ho, as my old friend used to say. John, hit the pints, but hit the points. May the Lord bless you. (laughs) May he pour in the oil and the wine if he's cut deep into you today. May he keep you. May he cause his wonderful face to shine upon you. And when that light shines, it will show you all the obstacles that are in the way, that are tripping you up. May his shalom rest upon you and yours. And I say you and yours because it's not just for you. It's for your household. It's for your children. Your children's children to the third and fourth generation, to a thousand generations. Let his blessing rest on you, your household, your children, your children's children. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I'll go through the comments as we uh, do the credits. Have a great day. See you tomorrow morning, those of you in the UK at 8 a.m., Thursday morning, this is our fifth week, and then we come into our sixth week, and then we have a two-week break. God bless everybody.